Hello, my name is Irini Polikarpu and I'm the head of the School of Sciences at Uclan Cyprus. I would like to welcome you to today's presentation about the school. Since its establishment, the School of Sciences positioned itself firmly at the forefront of science education and research in Cyprus and abroad. The school's vision is to be recognized as one of the premier science schools locally, regionally and internationally through its cutting-edge research, scholarly activity, innovative programs, outstanding graduates and community involvement. To achieve the school's vision, our strategic development areas are based on three main pillars, which they all need to be gracefully combined together. These three pillars are education, focusing on high-quality education through the offering of innovative programs and curriculum, as well as outstanding student experience and development, Research, focusing on interdisciplinary research projects with wide impact, high quality publications and development of a strong research community. And service and outreach, focusing on the school's engagement with the wider community and transfer of knowledge. There is also a fourth pillar with significant importance to our strategy at all levels, which is the establishment of a strong network of partners and which is a horizontal pillar strengthening each of the three main pillars mentioned. Now some quick information about the School of Sciences. The school has six main disciplines and across these disciplines we offer a total of 11 programs, six undergraduate and five postgraduate programs, which I will present to you shortly. Our faculty includes an outstanding group of scholars, all of whom hold a PhD degree, and they are highly research active, continuously pursuing new knowledge and innovative ways to apply it through research and through their teaching. Also, all our permanent members of academic staff must go through training to become fellows of the UK Higher Education Academy, ensuring that they have the necessary skills to deliver knowledge to the students and engage them with their learning. The majority of our academics are internationally recognized for their knowledge, research output and contributions to the scientific community. Many of them currently hold esteemed appointments on governmental and European Union advisory committees and professional bodies, evidence of the high recognition of their work by the community. A number of them have been invited to deliver guest lectures and keynote speeches at worldwide well-known universities and research events. Beyond their scientific contributions, academics transfer their knowledge to the local community through the organization of specialized seminars and trainings open to the public, especially for pressing matters that may be of concern to the community. Currently, at the undergraduate level, the school offers a BS Honors Computing with optional modules focusing on software engineering, on computer games development and on network technology. MB Eng honors electrical and electronic engineering with optional modules focusing on telecommunications and mobile technologies and on renewable and sustainable energy systems. We also offer a BSc honors in mathematics and statistics, BSc honors in sport and exercise science, and BSc honors in psychology, and a BSc honors in web design and development. At the postgraduate level, we offer MSc Computing with optional modules focusing on IT security and networking, on mobile and web development, and on IT management in business. An MSc in Cybersecurity offered through both conventional delivery and distance learning delivery. An MSc in Data Analytics. An MSc in Forensic Psychology with optional applied practical experience year. And an MSc in Sport and Exercise Science. The School of Sciences is committed to academic excellence and in offering educational services to cater the growing needs of the society. One of the most important aspects, which also differentiates us from many other schools locally, is our methodological approach to curriculum development. There are six main steps we follow, each one of equal importance. These steps involve identification of programs, market investigation, potential program alignment with professional certifications in demand by the industry, and industry partner advice and direction. Program curriculum is also influenced by any discipline standards and teaching and learning methodologies, and it is supplemented by the recruitment of the appropriate academic staff for the delivery of the program. 
It should be noted that step three, professional accreditations and alignment with professional certifications, is highly important for our graduates' employability. Therefore, the school has established several strategically targeted academic partnerships, many of which resulted in providing students with enhanced knowledge and skills through the completion of professional certifications or professional body accreditations and recognitions, which are in high demand by the industry. Of course, even if we develop the most innovative curriculum, it cannot be successful unless it is combined with an effective curriculum delivery. As I mentioned, student employability is a key element for us, so for all of our programs, we ensure that curriculum delivery combines research-informed and industry-informed teaching, which prepares graduates for diverse careers in the international market. Beyond the facilitation of the development of students' course-specific knowledge and skills, all of the school's courses aim at developing students' 21st century and transferable skills, including collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, communication, technology literacy, leadership, independent thinking, self-motivation, professionalism, and ethics. Such skills are considered necessary to succeed in a competitive and diverse global environment. Now, moving beyond the curriculum, we consider beneficial for our students to engage with further activities, which will assist in their personal development as well as their future employability. Whenever appropriate, we try to engage students with discipline-specific activities, such as participation in competitions through the support and coaching by academics, participation in different events or in the organization of local events led by our academics, participation in field trips to industry partners, attendance to guest lecture by industry professionals, and so forth. With regards to industry engagement, beyond the different industry-related curriculum activities that are embedded in students' learning, in almost all of our programs, we offer opportunities for our students to work on real industry projects with real industry clients, especially for their thesis or final year projects. Also, through our extensive network of partners, we secure local and international internships and placements for our students. All our programs are highly practical, no matter of the discipline. They all, in general, include more practical sessions than theoretical sessions, in which students have opportunities to apply their theoretical knowledge with the guidance and support of their instructor. Of equal importance to us is also the engagement of students with research not only at the postgraduate level, but also at the undergraduate level. This is often achieved through the curriculum, uh, such as the research-based thesis projects, or beyond the curriculum, such as participation of students on school research projects. Finally, as you can see here, overall, according to the school's results from the module feedback questionnaires through which our students provide feedback on their learning experience, 90.63% of the students are satisfied with their overall learning experience, and 92.56% of the students are satisfied with the learning support provided to them. With this, I conclude my presentation of the School of Sciences. I would like to thank you for listening. If you are interested to find out more information about the programs offered by the school, you can listen to one of our webinars where our course leaders present each program in more depth. Hi, my name is Josefina Antonio and I'm the course leader of MSc Computing at UCLan Cyprus. Welcome to this presentation. Firstly, let's talk about why you would want to obtain a master's in the area of computing. Well, there are many reasons for that. To start with, for a successful 21st century career, you need some essential skills. These do not just include technology use and development, but also technology monitoring and control, IT project management, and of course, the ability to solve complex problems and the ability to think critically. Our Master's in Computing is designed to help you develop those skills. Secondly, a Master's in Computing can help you get the top jobs in demand. 
like for example, data analysts, data scientists, digital marketing specialists, digital transformation specialists, information security specialists, software and application developer, network professional, database professional. Also, a master's in computing will give you the opportunity to become market ready because the program focuses on practical and professional skills. You also have the opportunity to enhance your profile with certifications and with research achievements. Now, we have discussed why a master's in computing is useful, but why do a master's in computing at UCLan Cyprus? Well, in addition to the great location, there are many reasons. Our curriculum is tested with success in both the UK and in Cyprus. Evidence of this success include the top jobs that our graduates have landed both in Cyprus and abroad. MSc computing graduates are employed in organizations such as CableNet, Wargaming, 3CX, XM, and other companies in Cyprus, but also in companies like Nielsen, Amazon, and others that are located abroad. At UCLan Cyprus, we have a professional out outlook towards you and your studies uh, during the whole time of your studies, and we encourage in internships, for example. Uh, we do that both in Cyprus and abroad. In Cyprus, we collaborate with industrial partners locally. And for internships abroad, we use well-known placement programs like Erasmus and IESTE. Now, your studies will also be informed by state-of-the-art industry practice because of our collaborations with major companies. Some of these companies are Cisco, Amazon, Amazon Web Services, Linux Professional Institute, and others. We can also guide you to obtain certificates uh, for various professional and industrial exams like CCNA, Android Development, Cloud Essentials, and Linux Essentials. Now, in terms of infrastructure and resources, technology resource, resource, resources, studying Technology is ideal at UCLan Cyprus, a modern university, right, with international awards for its audiovisual infrastructure for education. At UCLan Cyprus, you will also be taught by um, extremely experienced research active academics that are industry aware. You should also know that our academics, the academics of MSc Computing, are affiliated with the Higher Education Academy in the UK, and they are always aiming for teaching excellence. Now, specifically, what topics exactly can you cover in an MSc Computing? Well, we offer a variety of options so that, that you can create your expertise plan in the way that best suits your needs and, and your preferences. Some options are ethical hacking, e-marketing, user experience topics, mobile and web application development, enterprise data management, network operations and management, distributed systems, digital security, and information security management. Now, finally, here let's talk about some more opportunities you have as students of MSc Computing. As mentioned earlier, academics of MSc Computing are research active. And this is very important for you because you have the chance to publish papers, to work in research projects, um, to work in research and development departments. You can do that at UCLan Cyprus, or you can do that at other companies. Also, you have the opportunity to participate in conferences, in competitions, in outreach events, in workshops, in trainings, and many other types of events. Now, I want to emphasize here one more, once more our support for your employment and for your career. 
A number of events are organized to support your career throughout the year. This may include um, internship information days, interviews, seminars, and many other events such as training, trainings for your CV, for your interviews, and so on. Overall, you should know that your positive student experience and your future professional success are our top priorities. Feel free to contact me for any additional information regarding MSc Computing. Thank you. you chose to become a data analyst. I'm sure that besides being declared as one of the hottest jobs, you chose to become a data analyst because you want to expand your skill set and knowledge into mathematics, statistics, computer science and business intelligence. These skills will help you learn how to identify patterns which can help an organization to recognize new market opportunities. And these skills are very valuable in today's businesses, which is evident from the tremendous increase in demand for data analytics skills. This is also what some leaders in the industry are saying. But how important is data? It is a fact that data analysis can help us improve various aspects of the world in which we live in, such as the economy, public health and civil services. For example, data allows scientists to unravel entire DNA sequences in minutes. This means increased ability to predict patterns in diseases and mutations. This is only possible because of the vast data availability that exists today, which is truly massive. There are 2.5 quintillion bytes of data created each day at our current pace, but that pace is only accelerating with the growth of the Internet of Things. But equally important, the number of users is also rising, leading to even higher rates of data generation. Coming back to my original question on how important is data, I would like to focus on two important quotes by two important leaders in the field. The first one by Peter Drucker, a management guru, says, what gets measured gets managed, emphasizing on the importance of measuring the business performance in order to assess its past and current status and then be able to predict the future and take action. The second one by Arthur C. Nielsen says, the price of life is less than the cost of darkness, emphasizing on the need to invest in new analytical technologies to remain competitive in today's market. And the person who is responsible for transforming data to knowledge is the data analyst. The data analyst is responsible for collecting information from multiple sources such as structured databases, reports, and social media. Organize them appropriately so that the information can be easily extracted. Then process them in order to improve their quality. And then produce various descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive models. At the end, the results of those models need to be communicated back to the company. This is exactly what we're trying to do in our program, MSc in Data Analytics at UCL in Cyprus. Our program rationale is to provide students with knowledge on the complete spectrum of data analytics, that is to be able to structure, clean, transform and integrate the data, then explore, mine, discover and predict, and then communicate, visualize and market those data. Our curriculum focuses on three main types of analytics. Descriptive analytics, which aim to understand the current and past situation of an organization. Then using that information, we try to predict what will happen in the future. This is called predictive analytics. And finally, when multiple solutions are available, we want to be able to select the most efficient and effective one in order to act. This is called prescriptive analytics. 
Our vision for you is to first be able to tackle analytical problems using the techniques that will be delivered throughout the curriculum. This basically means that we aim for you to be able to understand the problem category, for example classification or clustering, and then use appropriate modeling techniques to solve it. To accomplish that, you first need to understand both theory and practice, and learn how to employ analytical techniques using various software tools. You will also understand how to interpret both simple and complex models and finally produce appropriate reports to convey knowledge to the companies. To accomplish our vision, we adopt a well-balanced curriculum approach with lectures to cover the theory and many labs so that you can enhance your skills and experience. We also have a strong academic industry community collaboration where you will get the opportunity to work on real life problems using real data. We give a strong emphasis on practicality by allowing you to experience many different software tools that are considered the most popular ones for data science so that we can improve your employability. Our curriculum is also aligned with professional material such as the prestigious SAS Joint Certificate in Business Intelligence and Data Mining. Our program consists of six core modules and one optional module. The core modules are CO4759 Enterprise Data Management, which focuses on databases, data management and organization, and querying with SQL and SAS Enterprise Guide. CO4760 Exploratory Data Analysis, which focuses on basic statistics and numerical predictions using R and RStudio. CO4762 Knowledge Discovery, which focuses on predictive modeling using Python and SAS Enterprise Miner. CO4761 Business Intelligence and Data Analytics, which focuses on the application of all types of data analytics within an organization. CO4820 Critical Analysis, which focuses on both quantitative and qualitative research. And finally, CO4804 which is the master thesis project. You also need to complete one elective module from the ones displayed here. And if you have questions about the electives, please visit the MSC Data Analytics course page in Blackboard for more information. We wish you a great start. Let me welcome you at the presentation of the MSc Cybersecurity Program. I'm Eliana Stavro. I'm an assistant professor and the course leader of the MSc Cybersecurity. The program started its operation in 2015 and supports two delivery modes, face-to-face -face and distance learning. The program considers the areas that are of high demand on the market, uh, such as digital forensics, penetration testing, incidents handling, and so on and delivers a curriculum that will assist the students to develop a set of cyber skills and knowledge and gain an advantage in terms of employability and promotion schemes. Our audience includes uh, newly graduate students, existing IT practitioners, as well as people from other related knowledge backgrounds, for example, people working already uh, in cyber. Regarding the aims of the program, the program targets to build fundamental knowledge and practical skills in cybersecurity, covering design, development, management aspects in a professional, legal, and ethical context, and gives to the students the opportunity to plan and undertake a cyber-related project where they can apply different aspects they have been taught. Moreover, the program targets to cultivate a range of transferable skills in a cyber context such as critical analysis, evaluation skills, communication, and self-management skills. Another aim is to encourage and enable the students to become reflective and research-aware practitioners, traits that are essential for many cybersecurity roles. Regarding the knowledge and skills developed by the curriculum, we give emphasis in understanding the adversary's mindset, performing security assessments to identify vulnerabilities, 
performing investigations to identify a cyber incident and handle it accordingly, applying technologies and best practices to defend systems, and performing risk assessment and managing the identified risk. Also, we give emphasis in furthering students' knowledge on research aspects. These uh, topics are covered by six compulsory modules, including ethical hiking, digital forensics investigation, cyber defense, information security management, critical analysis, and the master's project. Then, the students can select from two optional modules in case they want to go deeper in cyber incidents handling or in cyber warfare aspects. Regarding the teaching and learning environment supported by the MSc Cybersecurity Program, we are focusing on active learning through a student center approach. In addition, the distance learning program is delivered synchronously, recording the live lectures and making them available to the registered students. Moreover, a core component of the program is the state-of-the-art online cybersecurity laboratories equivalent to professional training environments that are utilized to practice cybersecurity concepts in a fully controllable environment without any concern if something goes wrong. Lastly, note that we provide flexible ways of communication with the cybersecurity team that delivers the program. Closing, I would like to highlight that we give attention to the student's personal development. We provide mentoring opportunities to participate in capture the flag competitions, pursue cybersecurity certifications, go through the hiring process, and pursue further research studies. We also promote training and employability opportunities provided by our collaborators so our graduates can find their place in the industry. Thank you for your attention and I will be looking forward to have you on board. So let me welcome you at the presentation of the MSc Forensic Psychology program. I am Dr. Lily Absolta and I'm a lecturer in psychology and a course leader of the MSc in Forensic Psychology. The MSc Forensic Psychology started its operation in 2017 and it's a unique program designed to prepare students for numerous diverse or specific careers within the general context of the criminal justice system. So graduates receive a spherical education and develop a repertoire of fundamental theoretical, methodological and applied areas of forensic psychology. Our audience includes newly graduate students of psychology or of an equivalent psychology qualification, such as criminology, forensics, uh, forensic criminological science and so on. Um, we also consider on an individual basis students within the degree that does not confer uh, to psychology, but has a good match of uh, curriculum, such as criminology, forensic and um, forensic criminological psychology or criminological sciences and so on. Also, the program attends to victims and offenders. Within regard to the offenders, it offers the progression of an offender from their first contact with the criminal justice system until their eventual release into the community and transfer to conditions of less security. Also, attention is given to the victims and pre-trial issues, including civil justice. Furthermore, uh, the role of ongoing assessment, interventions and thought care are emphasized throughout their curriculum. Speaking of the more practical aspects of the program, teaching methods include lectures, seminars and self-directed study. Regarding the assessments, we involve the combination of exams and coursework, and we offer this uh, course on a face-to-face -face delivery mode. Additionally, we aim to focus on, on active learning throughout a, a student-centered um, approach. 
Regarding the aims of the program, uh, regarding year one, the course aims to facilitate and evaluate students' competence in core academic areas of forensic psychology through supportive seminars, lectures, coursework examinations, and independent study with research supervision. A final aim is to facilitate and evaluate students' competence in the production of a research project designed to access their ability to integrate core information from the course and implement it within a research setting. So once students complete first year successfully, psychology graduates have the option to take the practical experience module, which includes 1,000 hours of supervised practical training. This will provide them the opportunity to become registered forensic psychologists and practice the profession in Cyprus. Moreover, the program targets to cultivate a range of transferable skills in a forensic content, such as clinical uh, critical analysis and evaluation skills, demonstrate a good level of organization, communication skills, also, another aim is to encourage and enable students to become reflective and research aware practitioners. Regarding the first year curriculum, uh, through supportive seminars, lectures, courseworks, examination and independent study, students will gain their academic skills in forensic psychology. As part of students assessment, they will have the chance to research an area of forensic psychology that really interests them. So a few examples of modules that students will undertake during their first year are advanced methods in psychology, which will enable students to develop knowledge and skills in research methods and statistics, and they will use this knowledge later on in creating their own thesis also applying psychology to the legal process, which explores the role of psychology in the legal process while being introduced to the definition of crime, criminality, theories of punishment and treatment. Also, um, another module is attribution of offenders and victims, which explore the theories of criminal behavior, such as violence and sexual offending, forensic mental health, uh, in this module, uh, students will focus on accessing and uh, treating offenders with mental disorders. Also, risk assessments where students will give the opportunity to conduct and interpret assessments with offenders. Professional practice and intervention will develop students, uh, will help uh, in uh, students to develop the knowledge as a consultant and learn um, important key aspects of consultation, such as ethical and professional consideration of this role, and many, many more other modules. Apart from that, students will have also the chance to participate in trainings and seminars, which are offered by distinguished invited speakers and researchers in the field of forensic psychology from all around the world. Now, uh, regarding the second year of the MSc in Forensic Psychology, it consists of a multi-component approach, which includes a series of practical workshops designed to enrich the trainee's practical assessment and, and treatment skills. Um, it's very important to clarify here that only students that they are holding a background in psychology uh, or a degree in psychology they are able to continue with the second year, which is the practical year. So here we see an indication list of seminars um, and uh, some of the seminars and workshops that they will be presented in the second year are um, assessment skills, forensic assessment interviews, professional issues like ethical and correctional uh, facilities, confidentiality, conflict of interest, treatment refusal, and so on. Uh, you will also be taught core counseling skills as well as a variety of different interventions like cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, dialectical behavioral therapy, and so on. Assessments and diagnosis, uh, formulation practices, 
psychopharmacology in forensic settings, child custody assessment, competence stand trial, malingering, and many, many more other workshops and seminars. In addition, the practical experience module provides trainees with the opportunity to have internship in a number of organizations, such as the Association of the Pro for the Prevention and Handling of Violence in Family, SBA Prison at the Gallia, and our newly developed Psychological Wellbeing and Counseling Center at UCLAN Cyprus. So students will also uh, be offered weekly individual and group supervisions um, as part of their learning experience. Apart from that, um, I would like to mention that uh, for many years our students have the chance to travel abroad and get experience from uh, partners and organizations that we uh, keep hold tight um, of collaboration where students can also gain great experience of um, forensic psychology while uh, studying uh, and working abroad. Now, uh, to facilitate career opportunities, students will be exposed to a learning and uh, research environment that is rich in mentoring opportunities from members of the program team with academics and or practical forensic experience. As I already mentioned, the course covers a range of forensic psychology topics which will allow candidates to strengthen the knowledge and skills that are essential for becoming certified forensic psychologists. And of course, has been specifically designed to reflect the academic skills required to apply psychology to a forensic setting, including prisons, secure hospitals, probation, police services and the court. Also, the course can prepare students for numerous diverse or specific careers in the public as well as the private sector, while providing graduates with the necessary skills and knowledge to pursue career within the general content of criminal justice system. Lastly, students who complete the practical experience module uh, which will include 1,000 hours of supervised training, will be able to become registered forensic psychologists and practice their profession in Cyprus. I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, um, I would like to also invite you to apply for, apply for this course. And obviously, forensic psychology team at UCLAN uh, Cyprus will be looking forward to have you on board. Thank you. My name is Kurla Parpa and I'm the course leader of the MSc in Sports and Exercise Science program. The MSc in Sports and Exercise Science program follows the general core structure of the successful UCLAN UK program, but tailored to the Cyprus context. All the compulsory course modules are offered in parallel with the UCLAN UK, while the optional modules are tailored to the needs of the Cypriot market and specifically are designed with emphasis in exercise-based rehabilitation and musculoskeletal management and prevention. The duration of the program is 14 months. The program is designed to prepare students for numerous diverse or specific careers within the area of sports, health, fitness and rehabilitation. At the same time, strong emphasis is placed on the application of sports and exercise science in the area of rehabilitation, assessment, therapy and prevention. Strong emphasis is placed upon developing professional report writing and presentation skills, methodological rigor, research expertise, independent learning and critical thinking. The program team consists of Dr. Kula Barpa. My research involves identifying musculoskeletal imbalances in the lower limbs and their associations to musculoskeletal injuries. Dr. Marcos Michailidis, his research active within the area of fitness assessments in elite athletes and first responders. Dr. Mario Strifonidis, his research active within the area of tissue engineering related to various orthopedic conditions, orthopedic trauma and trauma rehabilitation. Dr. Evstathios Christodoulidis, his research involves the role of sport in society, sport, 
and social changes. Dr. Costantina Inzeiani, she is research active within the area of clinical biomechanics, musculoskeletal ultrasound imaging, and electromyography. Our support staff, Thalia Panagi and Yota Tsoku. Thalia Panagi is a sports psychologist, and Yota Tsoku is a registered dietitian. We have several collaborations with external organizations such as the Cyprus Sports Medicine Association, the PASP Cyprus Football Association, Cyprus Under Doping Authority, Cyprus Olympic Committee, as well as collaborations with sports academies, private organizations, professional football teams, and futsal and basketball teams. Overall, the course can prepare students for numerous diverse or specific careers in the public as well as the private sector. It provides graduates with the necessary skills and knowledge to pursue careers within the context of using science to improve sports performance, injury management, rehabilitation and prevention. The course can attract young graduates and professionals from various fitness and rehabilitation related occupations looking to perfect their portfolio of skills and knowledge. The program consists of three optional modules, XS 4001, Management Strategies for Sport Injuries, XS 4002, Prevention Strategies for Sport Injuries, and Sports and exercise for special population groups. At the same time, the program consists of three compulsory modules. The XS4000, Research Methods for Sports Exercise and Nutritional Scientists. XS4301, Advanced Practitioner Skills for Sport and Exercise Scientists. This module spreads over semester uh, one, two, and three, while uh, XS4000 spreads uh, over semesters one and two. At the same time, the students are required to complete a research project, which is a 60 credit module spread over semesters two and three. To pass, the majority of the modules, students must achieve an overall average of 50%. There is a wide range of assessment methods, which include written exams, practical assessments, lab reports, essays, as well as research proposals. The sports laboratory, the lab's purpose is threefold to provide the students with hands-on experience on the latest advancements on fitness testing and assessment, to allow students to contact quality research with valid and reliable data, and at the same time to offer services to the community. As you can see, our program incorporates hands-on practical sessions for the application of the theoretical knowledge gained. As a result, our graduates are well equipped for careers in any type of fitness industry or business, since they have knowledge on the complete spectrum of the theoretical background and management of sporting injuries and exercise rehabilitation. Furthermore, graduates will possess the key theoretical exercise rehabilitation skills along with their practical applications for special populations, such as diabetics, heart disease patients, stroke patients, as well as individuals suffering from decreased mobility due to neurological conditions. Any questions, feel free to email me or call me. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Maria Resti and I am the Senior Student Recruitment Officer at UCLan Cyprus. I will just share my presentation. 
in which uh, we will be going through the application procedure and any other general information regarding the admissions process uh, to UCLAN Cyprus. Okay, how to apply? It's a very uh, straightforward and simple procedure. Uh, and of course, our university advisors will be, guide, will be guiding you throughout the procedure. And uh, you will be taken step by step in order to finalize the whole procedure and become one of our students. You will first of all need to complete uh, the application form, which can be found on our website, either as a PDF format file or um, simply complete the online application form that we have. In any case, you can always email us on the general admissions email, which can be found um, at the bottom of the slide, and you can make a note of it. So um, you can email us and we will email you back the PDF uh, application form. Now, for the undergraduate applicants, we will need to have the school living certificate and the mark sheet as well as the English language qualification certificate, which can be anything um, such as IELTS or IGCSE or TOEFL or any other equivalent. If you're not sure whether we can accept your uh, certificate, you can always email it to us. We will evaluate it and we will get back to you uh, with the decision of the admissions department whether this document can be accepted or not. In any case, if the qualifications that uh, you're currently holding cannot be accepted by the admissions department, you can always take our own uh, English language test, which is also internationally recognized. And uh, we arrange accordingly and uh, as per your availability in order to take the test online even. Uh, along with the previously mentioned documents, we will also need to have your ID card or your passport copy. Now, for the postgraduate applicants, we need uh, what we have previously said about the undergraduate applicants, plus a few more documents, such as the bachelor degree, as well as the transcripts, uh, your personal statement, uh, your CV, and two reference letters sent to us directly by your referees. The application uh, will cost 50 euro, that is the application fee, and it's non-refundable. The payment methods uh, will be discussed with you, uh, with the advisors of the university, and they will be guiding you, as I said, step by step in order to uh, successfully make your payment and uh, being able to apply and evaluate your application. All of the documents will need to be emailed to your university advisor or to the general admissions email at admissions at uclancypress.ac.cy. Now, about the entry requirements. For the undergraduate programs, we will require from the applicant to have a high school living certificate, such as uh, the Apolitirion, if we're talking for local students in Cyprus or in Greece. And for international students, we can accept the A-levels, uh, the IB, or any other equivalent. We know that in each country there is a different certificate, uh, the equivalencies all over the world are different. So if you have questions and you're not sure whether we can accept uh, your qualification or not, as I said, you can just email us and we will get back to you with, uh, with the evaluation. Um, we will also need the English language qualification, the IGCSEs or the IELTS, and also depending on the course that you will be choosing to study, um, there is an entry requirement, a specific entry requirement uh, and a specific mark that we require in order to be admitted. For the postgraduate programs, we will need uh, the applicant to have a bachelor degree or equivalent. Uh, it will have to be, uh, if we're talking about UK bachelors, it will need to be a UK lower second class bachelor degree. And uh, for any other country where uh, the marking system is different, we will make uh, the equivalency and we will inform you accordingly. Because in some countries, you know, there is a GPA or um, it's, uh, the, the mark is counted differently. 
And for all of the master programs, we will need to have an IELTS equivalent to 6.5. If you do not have IELTS, you can provide any other equivalent uh, uh, certificates or still take our own English test that we are providing at the university. And of course, we need to mention here that the language of instruction of all the programs and the assessment is in English. Now, for all of our international students, the non-EU students, um, we will need to uh, apply for a student visa. So, all non-EU students are required to apply for a student visa in order to study uh, at UCLan Cyprus. Again, uh, we have a few steps so it's easier and uh, better for you to understand and to see that the procedure is not uh, complicated. Um, we will just simply take it step by step and I will explain it to you uh, right now as a summary though. Uh, I will not get into um, much details because anyway your university advisor will be guiding you uh, throughout the whole procedure. Step number one is to complete the application form that we were previously talking about, which is an um, application form in order to be admitted at the university and, of course, to pay the application fee. Now, as long as this application, um, as soon as this application fee will be paid and we will evaluate your documents, you will receive your offer letter. Then you will need to start collecting the documents for your student visa application. As soon as you collect all of the documents, if you have any questions and if you're not sure, you can always email them to your university advisor. We will check the documents and we will get back to you. Now, if you're sure that you have collected the correct documents, you can proceed with attesting them. Um, the attestations, though, vary from country to country. And therefore, depending on each document which is listed um, uh, on the list that you will be getting from your advisor, uh, there is a different attestation. So every country has a different attestation. Your university advisor will be giving you the list and will be giving you the places where you will need to be going to have your documents stamped and attested. Step number five is to email all of these documents to your university advisor with the stamps, with the attestations, in order for your advisor to check them and to make sure that everything is correct. We will never um, uh, leave you alone just to send any documents uh, which may be wrong and submit them to the migration with the risk of being uh, declined uh, and not get your, uh, your entry permit. So we make sure uh, as a university and as a department that all of the documents that you provide are correct and they will be accepted by the, um, the, uh, by the authorities, by the migration authorities. So once we confirm that the documents are correct, you can then move on to step six, which is the easy part here. And it means that you will need to send all of the documents that you have collected, originals and copies, um, depending on the country and depending on the, on the documents, will be uh, mailed to us maybe by courier, to, um, to have them here in hard copies. Now, um, as a general guideline, um, you need to remember that all the applications uh, for the visa and all documents are evaluated by the Migration Department and the Ministry of Education. So, as soon as uh, we have a decision, and as soon as the decision is communicated directly to us, and your university advisor is aware of the decision, we will inform you accordingly. About the scholarships, we do offer scholarships. We have the academic merit scholarships, uh, we have athletic scholarships, and we have some other various uh, bursary and discounts. For the undergraduate scholarships, we are offering 40% and 50% on the original tuition fees always. And that depends on the mark that you have on your high school living certificate. So depending on your country, depending on your qualification, uh, you may be entitled to a 40 or a 50% scholarship. For our postgraduate students, um, they are entitled on, uh, on getting a 30% scholarship, up to 30% actually, 
and that is uh, upon a successful uh, course leader interview. This means that if a postgraduate student would also like to apply for a scholarship, we will need to arrange an interview with the course leader or even the head of school and uh, um, the, the, the course leader, the academic staff, will decide uh, the percentage that the student is entitled to. The athletic scholarships fall under some specific scholarship schemes. That is why we also have the Athletic Scholarship Committee, which uh, will evaluate your case, will evaluate your documents and any proof that uh, you're indeed an athlete and we will decide, this, the, the committee will decide and they will inform uh, our department whether you're entitled to any specific percentage or any specific discount as an athlete. Other bursaries and discounts that we're offering, which is uh, mostly for the local students, um, we are giving uh, some municipalities and communities bursaries some bursaries and discounts and special prizes to some companies and organizations that we have collaborations with. Uh, there is a large family bursaries. Uh, also, uh, we do have a discount for siblings and for our alumni, of course. And if you're not falling into, um, if you're not under any of these categories that have been previously mentioned, you can always inform us that you need to apply for a scholarship and that you need a scholarship and uh, you may be granted a special bursary. You will simply need to complete a scholarship application form. You can ask for this form um, your uh, university advisor. The form will be provided to you. You can complete it and the committee will have a look and decide on the amount uh, you will be entitled to. Now, this is the recruitment and the admissions department. Um, as you see here, uh, we're four people in the department. It's myself, it's uh, Mrs. Androniki Elena and Mrs. Andonia Ioannou, who are the student recruitment officers. And uh, these are the advisors that will be guiding you throughout the procedure, including myself. And we have our admissions officer, Ms. Katerina Petru, who is the officer who will be evaluating and issuing your offer letters. And in any case, you can either contact me via email or via phone or WhatsApp or Viber. Uh, it's also available. Or, or through our uh, general um, um, emails and phone numbers, which you can see on the right side of the slide. We have the admissions at uclancypress.ac.cy. We have the phone number of the university and, of course, our website. You can also find us on, uh, on different social media. It's uh, worth to check them. And if you would like to be more informed and if you would like to have a personalized session with one of our advisors, or with one of our course leaders, um, you have the chance to do so by booking your online information session. Uh, we're available every day, Monday to Friday, from 9.30 until 4.30. So you can simply uh, book your session at your most convenient time, and one of our advisors will guide you on how to join the meeting. Through these uh, online information sessions, you will be able to find out how to apply at the British University of Cyprus. You will uh, discuss your career options and our programs of study with uh, the advisor or with the course leader. You will get into more details about the entry requirements. You will have a virtual tour of the campus and the award-winning facilities. Um, and as I said, you can also book the online session with the academic faculty. I would like to thank you for, um, for attending this webinar and uh, we do look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.